What's up everyone, I'm David Warren and welcome back to this week's video. Today, I wanna to share with you guys what my clinical journey has been like in CRNA school. I am a third year or a senior nurse anesthesia resident at National University in Fresno, California. And I really wanna share with you guys what our clinical journey is like. I've done some videos on the didactic component, but not a whole lot of videos on the clinical aspect. And I really want to share with you guys what clinicals are like specifically at this program. So again, I'm a nurse anesthesia resident at National University. We're based in Fresno, California. It is a three-year, 36-month DNAP CRNA program. It is front-loaded, so the first 15 months of the program are on campus, you're learning all of the didactic component, all the didactic content that goes with providing anesthesia. It's essentially everything you need to know to pass boards you learn in the first 15 months. And then, and only after then, you progress on the clinical phase of the program for 21 months, for a total of 36 months. So for me personally, I started in January of 2022 in the program that started the like first quarter of the didactic content all the way through April 2023. Well, really March 2023. Starting in April 2023, I started clinical. So from April 2023 all the way through the end of the year, now starting in January 2024, all the way through this year, I graduate in December of 2024. So we're essentially doing almost two years of clinical rotations. Now, uh, I mentioned it's a front-loaded program, so all of the didactic content is presented up front. In the clinical portion of the program, there is no new didactic content. There's no like didactic class where you're doing principles of anesthesia or more pharmacology or anything like that. I'll kind of get into kind of what the what we do for board preparation here in just a bit, but just know that there's no new didactic content while you're in the clinical phase of the program. So in the didactic phase, you're essentially in four classes per quarter for 15 months. So we're doing things like anatomy, physiology, and then principles of anesthesia, pharmacology, our simulation lab, all of those things. And then whenever we start the clinical component of the program, we're in two classes per quarter. And so that is like a DNAP class, which would be something like epidemiology, which is what I'm in this quarter, or some kind of like community business of anesthesia or communications course, which we've taken in prior quarters, and then a clinical course. So there's two quarter or two classes per quarter in the clinical phase of the program. There's the DNAP course and then your clinical course, which composes like your clinical rotations. And this is not necessarily the video to discuss the differences between those classes. Just know that after you finish the didactic phase of the program, Whenever you start the clinical phase, you're going to be in two classes per quarter, four quarters in a year, versus four classes when you're in the didactic phase of the program. So the load in that sense will lighten just a bit. You're not studying like 24-7 at your house. You're actually going to be doing clinical, and you're going to be doing that the majority of the time. And so I'm really going to start with, we're going to pick up at the end of didactics. So this would be like March 2023, right before we start clinical in 2024. So this is taking back almost a year for me. So we will find out our clinical rotations at this program approximately three months in advance. Usually like eight to 12 weeks is a good, a good like medium. Mostly we find it out about three months in advance, but sometimes it may be a little more to the eight week mark. Um, and so at this particular program, we travel for all of our clinical rotations. We don't have a home site. So this is going to be very dependent on where you go to school. There are some CRNA programs where you will have a home clinical site, meaning you're doing the majority of your rotations at like one particular hospital. And then you will do some like outside rotations for a few weeks at a time at another hospital, but the majority of your rotations are at like one hospital. That's not the case here at National University. Most, uh, sorry, all of our clinical rotations are in 12 week segments. So one quarter at a time, four quarters in a year, 12 week segments, uh, essentially at different locations in different states. And so we will find out, like I said, about eight to 12 weeks in advance where we will be going next. So for our first clinical rotation, we found out, I, I wanna say it was January, 2023, where we would be going in April 
of 2023 that for that first clinical rotation. So about three months. And then that could be anywhere in California, Arizona, Nevada, or Texas. Those are the main locations. I think there's only one site in Nevada, which I went to for my first rotation, but the majority of the sites are in California, Arizona, and Texas. So California and Arizona having the majority of the sites, Texas having a handful of sites, and then again, Nevada having that one site that we go to. And so um, kind of broad overview, you get that about a three-month time frame from finding out where you're going to when you actually have to go there. And that process looks a little bit different for each rotation that you go to. Again, between eight and 12 weeks, they'll let you know where your clinical rotation is going to be. You'll get an email from our administrative assistant saying you're going here for your rotation. And um, it'll tell you the dates that you have to be there. So usually 11 to 12 weeks per rotation, and they'll give you those specific dates in that email. And then you're essentially responsible for finding your own housing at that particular location. There are some locations that have free housing available. So some sites in Arizona, some sites in California that have free housing, uh, and then some sites in Texas that have free housing. But if there's not free housing, then you would be responsible for that housing, for providing housing for yourself. And usually for me personally, that's been in the form of an Airbnb. It's just the easiest way to go. Most recently, I've started using Furnished Finder. It is quite a bit cheaper. You avoid some of the fees on Airbnb. Um, but again, you're setting up, if you've used Furnished Finder before, you're kind of setting up that deal between you and the landlord yourself. So you don't have the necessarily the security blanket of Airbnb if something like cancels last minute. So kind of take that into consideration, um, but you are responsible for finding your own housing. So after I find out where I'm going, I kind of jump on housing pretty quickly to determine like where I need to go, where I'm going to live, uh, what are, what good areas, you know, where I'm going to stay, that sort of thing. So I jump on that relatively quickly. Um, and then the hospital that you go to, your schedule is really going to depend on what the schedule is that the anesthesia providers work at that particular location. So um, you're not necessarily going to find out your schedule when you find out where you're going for your rotation. So you really won't find that out until a few weeks before you actually start your clinical rotation. So again, you'll find out where you're going three, you know, eight to 12 weeks in advance. And that's really all you'll find out. Uh, your dates that you're going there, and then you'll have to secure housing for yourself or if somebody's going with you. Uh, and some of the places like more than one resident will go at a time. So maybe there are three or four people going, or maybe you're the only one. You can talk around in your class and figure out, you know, who's going where. Um, and then after you secure your housing in a few weeks more, like a few weeks later down the road, you'll probably get an email from the administrative assistant saying, here's the email of the clinical coordinator, reach out and introduce yourself. And so you'll just send an email to like the clinical coordinator at that particular site that you're going to, uh, just essentially introducing yourself and saying you're going to be the nurse anesthesia resident working there. And they'll kind of give you some more information about orientation or kind of what's expected of you. And again, that's this is going to be wildly different depending on which site you go to. So most of the sites have some sort of structure in place because they're used to taking residents and they'll say, okay, you know, you're going to work three twelves or you're going to work uh, four eights. You're going to work Monday through Friday, or you're going to work every single day, Monday through Friday until your room is done. When your room's done, then you're good to go home. Um, or you're going to have to do some OB, you're going to have to do one night of call, you're going to have to do some weekend call. There are just so many variations that you will have depending on what clinical site you go to. And so that's there's just no standard way to say, oh, you're going to be working this schedule or this schedule. It's largely dependent on what site you go to and what the schedule looks like for, the, for that anesthesia group. Um, the majority of my sites that I've been to, I've worked Monday through Friday, no weekend, no call and have just worked until my room is done and then go home. So usually we're done by three to 5 p.m., somewhere in that range. And my last side was super busy and we were there 12 hours a day, pretty much five days a week. Um, but you get good case numbers, so it's kind of a trade-off. Um, and that's the thing, uh, it, there's so much variance in the sites that you go to. It's just hard to say, like, w there's no standardization across the board about 
what to expect at you can't just say i'm gonna expect this at this site and expect the same thing at the next site because it's going to be wildly different as far as your schedule the types of cases that they have what uh, hours you're going to be working are you going to be doing call or weekends can you do ob can you do peds can you do this can you do that it's just going to vary so much by each site and so you just have to wait and see kind of what that site offers um the good news is big broad picture now we're like stepping out thirty thousand feet um the, the like there's going to be no issue with graduating from this program and getting your required numbers most people graduate with way over the required amount of cases or hours that you need to sit for your national certification exam you're going to get way more than than what the bare minimum is required of you so you're going to get way way more than that so don't let that be an issue um kind of big broad picture national puts a huge focus on independent CRNA practice. And so going to independent sites, there are only like one or two ACT or uh, physician supervised, physician anesthesiologist supervised sites. 90 something percent of our sites are CRNA only sites, independent sites. So you'll just be working with CRNAs. Um, and that is good because that means you're gonna be doing everything. You're gonna be doing the central lines, you're gonna be doing the art lines, you're gonna be doing the nerve blocks. You're going to be doing the intubation. You're going to push your own induction drugs. You're literally going to be doing everything. There's not going to be, you know, somebody supervising you who's going to want to do everything for you. You're going to have the opportunity to do everything yourself. We don't necessarily train at sites where there are competing medical residents. So what I mean by that at sites where there are like anesthesia residencies, those physician residents are going to get preference over the big complex cases like hearts, vascular lungs, that sort of thing. And uh, you're not going to get access to that if you went to those sites. And some of the CRNA schools have that problem. But the sites that we go to, there's no, there's no competition for differing cases because you're probably going to be one of the only residents there at that site or just a handful of residents and everybody's gonna have access to whatever case they want. And so that's a very good thing. You're gonna get access to a wide variety of cases and you're gonna be the one doing everything, uh, which is really cool. Um, and that's another point that kind of segues into, segues into this is we don't have specialty rotations. There are, um, there are specialty cases that we have to have in order to graduate from CRNA school. And some programs have specialty rotations, meaning you're going to go do your heart rotation for like three weeks and you're just doing hearts those three weeks. And then you're going to do a regional rotation. You're just going to do that for six weeks. That's all you're going to do is a regional. You're not going to get any more regional outside of that. And that's a very much not the case at national, uh, at the program that I'm in. We do a little bit of everything almost at each and every clinical site. So we don't have a dedicated regional rotation because we get regional opportunities at every hospital we go to. And so I'm in my senior year now, I still essentially have a year of clinical left. And for like my regional anesthesia, I've already got almost 200 peripheral nerve blocks. And the minimum required to graduate is like 16 to 20 or something like that. And so getting a little bit of regional at each rotation you go to is super helpful because you get to perfect those skills that you have um, and not just in a six week period, but over two years, you're doing a little bit of regional everywhere you go because there's no competition. And so that's a huge plus for this program. And really the same goes for uh, any of the other specialty rotations. So OB, I've done OB at multiple different hospitals. Uh, I've done vascular at multiple different hospitals. I did hearts at one hospital, but had a dedicated like several week period of just doing hearts alone. Um, but that's not to say that at my next rotation, if there were hearts available, I could still do them there. And so that's a really cool thing is you don't get limited by doing, by saying, okay, you just get this one rotation and that's, once you finish that, that's it. You get to do a little bit of everything at each rotation you go to, which is a huge advantage. Uh, and then also at our sites, they put a huge emphasis on independent practice. So doing things yourself, you're not going to have somebody babysitting you the entire case so my first rotation the crnas uh, would come in and stay with me pretty much the whole case then about six weeks in they would start leaving intermittently throughout the case during maintenance phase they would be there for the important parts uh, or the critical parts and then during my second rotation it was very much like 
this is your case. You do the pre-op, you determine the plan for anesthesia, and you carry out the anesthetic. They would come in for induction and emergence and extubation. I would be there by myself during the maintenance phase, and they would expect you to manage the patient. And having that experience of managing the patient yourself, it sounds absolutely terrifying, your first rotation, but the more you get your feet under you and the more you realize, like, I need to be able to do this myself, the more confident you get at actually performing the anesthetic and being comfortable with it. And there's just so much stuff that you learn just on your own without somebody hovering over you and saying, okay, now give this. Now give this, I want you to use this. I want you to do this and do this. You're not being told exactly what to do every second of every case. You have free reign as to what you want to do as long as it's safe. And that's the really cool thing about this program is they put such a high emphasis on independent practice. And so many people that I've talked to in different rotations from different schools don't have that experience. And let me tell you what, you don't want the first time you do a case alone to be after you have a license. You want to get that experience before you graduate while you still have somebody there. So if you do, if you do need help, if you need somebody to come in and assist you with something, you have that safety net there. You don't want that to be after you graduate and you don't have that safety net. So super important to find schools with those type of rotations that allow you to be independent, make your own independent decisions, make your own plan of anesthesia, and let you experiment with anything you want to as long as it's safe for the patient. And that's really cool about Nationals. They let you do that. And again, this is largely going to depend on the type of facility that you end up at. So there are some facilities that give you more free reign like that than others will. And a lot of this is also preceptor dependent. So depending on who you're with, or that day is going to depend on the type of autonomy you have. Uh, and in my experience, the clinicians that are super confident in themselves and know that they are good anesthesia providers, they give you more free reign. It's the anesthesia providers that aren't confident in themselves that say, we're going to do it this way and only this way. And I've only ran into that just a handful of times, thankfully. Um, 99% of the people that I've worked with have been fantastic. And they said, this case is yours. You do what you think is best. And I'll be here to get us out of trouble if, we, if something happens. And that's truly how you learn in anesthesia is being able to do those cases yourself and being able to manage it yourself and take care of the problems. And so that's a really cool thing about National is that, is that program really emphasizes that and allows you to do that. And so that's a little bit about overview of what the program wants and what uh, the emphasis is. And again, a lot of the details are going to be left up to the facility to where you're doing the clinical rotation. So uh, as far as who you're working with each day, that's also going to be facility dependent. There are some places where you're going to work with the same person maybe for a week. And then you're going to go with a different CRNA for another week, or you may be with a different person each day. Um, it really just depends. Um, the biggest factors that I can tell you to take advantage of are doing things yourself, like start day one, going into the OR, setting up your own case, getting comfortable with your own setup, and then doing your own pre-ops, doing everything as much as you can independently yourself. Because the quicker you get that and the quicker you rely on yourself and the more you, and, and the less you rely on your CRNA to do things for you, the better off you will be in the future. And so I would just encourage you to start doing that day one, like go into the OR and get everything set up yourself, get there before the CRNA gets there, set every, set the case up yourself, set the drugs out that you want to use, and then do your pre-op and determine your anesthetic plan. Uh, and at almost all of the road, Essentially, all the rotations that I've been at, I've had access to the Pixis, meaning I can go in, get my own medicines out, set everything up myself. I don't need the CRNA there to log in or to do anything for me. I can set everything up myself uh, and then go pre-op the patient. And I would say probably half and half of you is paper charting versus computer charting, uh, getting everything situated in the computer pre-op wise, and then get an anesthesia plan together. Um, and again, all of that's also going to be facility dependent on what you have access to and what you don't have access to. Um, since the majority of our rotations are independent and independent focused, you will have access to like the Pixis and the charting system and everything you would need to essentially run the anesthetic yourself. 
Um, and the more comfortable you get, the easier it truly becomes with setting the case up yourself, doing things yourself, getting ready for the day, and then knowing based on what surgery is taking place, what kind of anesthesia plan you're going to implement and do it safely. Uh, and that's a really cool thing is our university like really fosters that from day one, um, being independent, setting, doing your own case, doing your own pre-op, doing your own block, doing everything yourself and fostering that early, early on. Um, that's a brief overview of what clinical rotations have looked like. Um, if you have specific questions, comment below. I would love to answer them. I would like to preface this whole video at the end with this by saying this is just my experience. If you're in CRNA school at another location or you're going to another location, it probably will be very different. It's not going to be the same. Each school has their own like ideologies and the things they want out of different rotations. So just kind of take my experience for what it's worth. Um, I'm just giving you my experience and what's worked well for me. And that's not to say that there are not other ways of doing it and not better ways of doing it. Uh, but this has been my experience and what I have enjoyed and kind of what I've gotten out of my clinical rotations so far. So comment below if you have questions. I would love to hear from you. I would love to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.